and some of the skin from that one woman, I probably put some oil on, possibly. That's all. Soft it up. Have you ever wondered what lies beneath the seemingly ordinary lives of people? What dark secrets and unimaginable horrors might be concealed behind a facade of normalcy? In the chilling annals of true crime, one name stands out as a chilling enigma, Ed Gein. Ed Gein's name transcends being a mere footnote in the annals of crime. It is an indelible mark of horror. His life story serves as a stark reminder of the capacity for evil that can lurk within even the most seemingly ordinary individuals, shaped by the complex interplay of familial influences. Gein's legacy extends far beyond his own life, infiltrating every facet of popular culture. His crimes continue to captivate and disturb, inspiring countless works of fiction and true crime fascination. From Norman Bates in Alfred Hitchcock's Psycho, to Leatherface in the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, Gein's influence on iconic horror characters is undeniable. The dark specter of his mother's influence, coupled with the destructive consequences of his father's alcoholism and abuse, and the profound solitude that followed their deaths, loom large in his legacy, reminding us of the intricate tapestry of familial bonds and their profound impact on the human psyche. In this case, it was for unimaginable horror, a legacy that will forever haunt our nightmares. Now let's dive into the life and crimes of Ed Gein. Born in 1906 in the tranquil town of La Crosse, Wisconsin, Ed Gein's descent into madness and depravity is a complex and harrowing tale, deserving of a closer examination. This video delves into the life of Ed Gein, scrutinizing his formative years, the enigmatic death of his brother Henry, the community's horrified reaction to his crimes, his eventual capture, and the nightmarish revelations within his isolated farmhouse. It also explores the profound influence of both his parents on his psyche, with a special focus on the role of his father's alcoholism and abusive behavior, and the pivotal impact of his parents' deaths on his lonely existence. Ed Gein's journey into darkness finds its origins in the turbulent setting of the Gein family home. Augusta Gein, his mother, cast a long shadow over Ed and his brother Henry. Her unwavering religious fervor left an indelible mark on her sons, shaping their beliefs and molding their worldviews. In contrast, George Gein, Ed's father, embodied a starkly different presence. A man whose struggles with alcoholism and abusive behavior created an atmosphere of constant tension and fear within the household. The toxic interplay of a devout mother and a father grappling with addiction set the stage for Ed Gein's nightmarish transformation. May 1944 etched a chilling chapter in the lives of the Gein brothers when a seemingly innocuous brush fire on their property led to the discovery of Henry Gein's lifeless body. Officially attributed to smoke inhalation and exposure, Henry's death remained shrouded in mystery and suspicion. Rumors circulated that Ed might have played a malevolent role in his brother's demise, fueled by the eerie silence that followed the fire and Ed's subsequent erratic behavior. Henry's untimely passing left Ed bereft and isolated, stripped of the only source of warmth and companionship he had ever known. It marked the beginning of Ed's descent into profound solitude, where the influences of his parents haunted his every move. With the loss of his brother, Ed Gein's already fragile grip on reality began to slip further. Isolation, combined with his mother's oppressive teachings and a growing fascination with human anatomy, formed the crucible of his transformation into a monster. Augusta's indoctrination had left an indelible mark on his psyche, driving him toward increasingly grotesque obsessions. Ed's morbid curiosity led to grave robbery, where he systematically exhumed corpses from local cemeteries. His horrific pursuits extended beyond grave desecration, as he embarked on a spree of unparalleled horror, transforming human body parts into grotesque trophies, crafting lampshades from human skin, and assembling furniture from bones. The culmination of these grotesque acts was a manifestation of the complex influences of both his parents, which tormented his every thought. So how long have you known Mr. Seven years. Seven years. What kind of a man did you know him as? Well, a man, a nice man, 
just like anybody else. The only difference I'd say in the man, he seems to be a little high. Ed Gein's capture in 1957 marked the end of his reign of terror in Plainfield, Wisconsin. The chain of events that led to his arrest began with the mysterious disappearance of Bernice Warden, a local hardware store owner. Her son reported her missing and recalled Ed Gein's suspicious behavior, leading up to her vanishing. Gein had been seen at her store multiple times, asking peculiar questions about purchasing antifreeze. The police decided to investigate Gein's farmhouse, unaware of the horrors awaiting them. In his shed, they discovered Bernice Warden's lifeless body grotesquely suspended upside down, disemboweled, with her throat and head missing. This gruesome discovery intensified their efforts to bring Jane to justice. The search extended to Gein's home, where authorities unearthed a horrifying cache of human remains and gruesome artifacts, including masks made from human skin, bowls crafted from human skulls, and decapitated heads. The evidence pointed clearly to Gein's involvement in a series of macabre crimes. Ed Gein was promptly taken into custody. During intense questioning, he eventually confessed to the murder of Bernice Warden. His psychological state, combined with the grisly nature of his crimes, raised concerns about his mental fitness to stand trial. How would you make the face masks? I'd make them mattress shape. I'd pack them with right out with paper so they dry, and sometimes bring a little salt on. Why the salt? They turn a greenish color. Ed Gein's trial in 1968 was a spectacle of terror and morbid fascination. As the world watched, he faced charges for the murder of Bernice Warden. Gein's defense attorney, William Belter, argued that his client was mentally unfit to stand trial, citing his long history of mental illness and bizarre behavior. However, the prosecution painted a picture of a cunning and deliberate killer shaped by a lifetime of maternal influence and the devastating consequences of his father's alcoholism and abuse. In the end, Ed Gein was found guilty, but legally insane, leading to his commitment to a mental institution where he would spend the rest of his life. The trial left a lingering sense of unease as it became clear that the horrors of Gein's crimes had been born from a mind twisted by a lifetime of isolation, trauma, and the intricate web of influences from his parents. In the wake of the trial, the town of Plainfield, Wisconsin, struggled to heal from the horrors committed within its boundaries. The scars ran deep, and its residents became unwilling celebrities, thrust into the harsh glare of national media attention. Reporters, my folks owned the country store at the time, and they were in there from early morning to late at night, and just one right after another. And curiosity seekers, there was thousands of them. And the traffic was bumper to bumper, from Plainfield out to his house and back, and all the crossroads. And you couldn't believe it. Despite local authorities' attempts to discourage such visits, the house where he had carried out his gruesome deeds became an eerie attraction, as if the dark energy that had permeated the place still held sway, drawing those with a macabre curiosity. Ed Gein's story continued to influence popular culture, inspiring writers, artists, and creators. His crimes served as the basis for some of the most enduring and terrifying characters in literature and popular imagination, like Norman Bates and Leatherface. Ed Gein's legacy was more than just terror and revulsion. It was a source of morbid fascination. People couldn't help but wonder what drove him to commit such atrocities. Was he a madman, a victim of his tragic upbringing, or something even more sinister? As the years passed, the details of Ed Gein's life and crimes faded from headlines, but his dark legacy endured, serving as a grim reminder of the depths to which the human psyche could descend. The trial of nightmares had ended, but the haunting legacy of Ed Gein lived on. Thank you for joining us on this chilling journey into the twisted world of Ed Gein. If you enjoyed this video and want more gripping stories, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and turn on the notification bell so you never miss an update. Until next time, stay cautious and remain vigilant.